Algorithms are the foundation to everything we do in computer science. Without them, we can't create the complex programs and technologies that we have today. In this video, I'm going to go over what an algorithm is and what are some of the benefits of algorithms and why I strongly encourage every student to truly focus on their algorithm abilities, their algorithm design skills, and not get as hung up on the implementation skills. Implementation for in C++ or Python or Java is important, but without that foundation in algorithms, you're always going to be limited in what you can do in this field. Let's start out by defining what an algorithm is. So an algorithm is a sequence of precise instructions which leads to a solution. Now there's two key things here that I want to point out. First is sequence. This implies that there is an ordering to the instructions. The other one is precise instructions. The computer is only going to do exactly what you tell it to do. It won't make any assumptions or it won't fill in any gaps from A to B. So you have to be very precise with the instructions that you give it and the order of the instructions that you give the computer. And again, an algorithm has the goal of leading us to a solution. So another way you can think of an algorithm is it's a blueprint. It's what the architect will draw up and then you give those plans out to your, your foreman and your construction workers and they'll actually implement your solution. They'll implement your blueprints and build your house or build your program. Now, the blueprints or the algorithm uh, for us are always written in your natural language and in mathematics. Now, if you're in any of my courses, our natural language is obviously English and obviously we'll be still be using mathematics. Now, one of the key things that comes from this is that all algorithms should be agnostic to any given programming language. So when I go and I, I look at those blueprints or I look at that algorithm, I should be able to implement it in C++ or I should be able to implement it in a Python or Java or any language that I need. Just like when I take those blueprints, I should be able to build it using brick or be using wood or any of the types of fixtures that I might want to use. The implementation here is different from the design or the plans. Now that we understand what an algorithm is, the question becomes why? Why do we want to take the time to generate these blueprints or generate this algorithm? Why don't we just go about implementing it right away? Well, one key thing is it is a common language that all computer scientists know how to speak, and it's what we use to design these programs because from this common language, we can understand the complexity of the algorithm or how efficient it is, or maybe some of the gaps in the algorithm, things that we need to address down the road. But more importantly, especially for a beginning student, is that the algorithm is written in your common tongue or your natural language. So take this example. If I asked you to write a poem in a foreign language, let's say French, and you're a native English speaker, the way you're going to write this poem is you're going to think of the poem and what you want to say, the meaning of the poem, in English. Right? You're going to write it out, you're going to refine it, and you're going to have a beautiful poem in English. And then to complete the assignment, you're going to then take that English poem that you wrote out, and you're going to translate it to French. And so what you did was you did the hard part of the creativity and the creation and the problem solving in your native language, and then you translated it to the language that it ultimately had to be in. And that's what algorithms do for us as computer scientists, is it gives us a method or a platform to problem solve, be creative, and figure out the solution to the problem that we're trying to tackle in English and math that we understand well. And then we can take that and convert it to the language that we need. Now, of course, there are some translation issues that will come up and things that we might have to go back to the drawing board on the algorithm. Like there might be an English word that doesn't exist in the French language, so how do we translate that? We will have those issues and we will talk about those down the road. But the main point here is algorithms are everything for computer scientists. So I urge you to really pay attention to these slides on algorithms and to take the time to work with them and always start with your algorithm before jumping into your C++ or your Python code. Now year in and year out, I always say start with your algorithms first. Figure out your plan, figure out your blueprints, and then implement your program. Well, what I always see from students is that they go, okay, and then I give them the problem that they need to solve 
and the first thing they do is put their fingers to the keyboard and start writing out in C++, which is a common language that I use in my courses. And as they go along, they find errors in their, their thinking, and they have to do some modifications, and they, they have to change some things here and change some things there. And ultimately, after a couple hours of hard work and compiler errors, they build a house. They get a solution to the problem. But if you do that, let's take this house example for a second. If you just start building, and you don't really know what the house is supposed to look like, and you just start putting pieces together, you might have to make some modifications, and, and ultimately what you get at the end is probably not what you were going for. It might meet all the requirements, but it might end up looking a little bit like the shack that you see here. So this hack it until you get it mentality is very common, especially with newer students who think that, oh man, the hard part is the programming. The hard part is learning the C++ syntax. But in reality, the hard part and the most useful part is that algorithm design. So we want to learn how to actually create blueprints first before we just kind of cobble something together. All right, so if we actually do build our algorithms first, what benefits do we get? How can you convince me that algorithms are a good thing? Well, first, you're going to gain a deeper understanding of the problem that you're trying to solve. Because if you really have to build a sequence of precise steps without skipping from point A to point B, and you have to be very explicit what you have to do, you have to understand the problem very well. And so that's the first benefit. The next benefit, as I mentioned before, is the ability to solve in your natural language. You're going to think faster, you're going to think more robustly, and you're going to have a better end result if you're thinking in English over C++ or any of the programming languages you might be learning. And then it allows your plan or the solution that you develop to be versatile, maintainable, and expandable. So take this image of row houses that we see here. Because somebody developed a plan, a blueprint, we were able to repeat that process using different materials and making some slight modifications like putting on different decorations or maybe putting windows in a slightly different location to still build a solid product but meet the needs of the new clients or the new house owners. And so not only can we reproduce that problem, we can reproduce it well and we can extend it. We can modify it as our needs change. At the end of the day, creating algorithms first will save you time and you will produce better programs. Now that we know what algorithms are and why they're important and some of the benefits, how do we go about writing these algorithms? Well, there's three common ways. We have the natural language and mathematics way. We have our pseudocode. And pseudocode is very similar to the natural language and mathematics, but it does look a lot more like code. And it might even have some flavor of the language that you're used to, but at the end of the day, it's still not compilable code. And then the third way, which is a little bit more graphical than the other two, are flowcharts. And you're going to see various ways of presenting and crafting algorithms as we go through uh, these videos. Um, and we will talk more about flowcharts at a later point. All right, so let's go through a little case study to where we can kind of understand how this process is going to flow. So the first thing we want to do whenever we're given a problem or we find a problem we want to solve is we need to understand it. We need to know what assumptions we might have or what are the requirements of the problem so we can figure out what the steps to solve it need to be. So let's take, for example, this problem. Given a list of positive numbers, return the largest number in the list. So maybe the input to this problem would be an unordered list L of n positive numbers where n is greater than zero. So let's highlight a few things here. First, from the problem statement, I identified that there was no ordering to the list. It didn't say a list of sorted numbers or a list of even numbers, right? It's just an unordered list. But it did say positive, so that's why I have positive in my input. And we are making the assumption that we have at least one element in our list when I say where n, which is the number of positive numbers, is greater than zero. Okay, so that's an assumption I'm making, and we'll have to be clear about that. Because if I don't make that assumption, my steps that I do in my algorithm might be different. 
The other thing I want to point out here is the fact that I used variables, L and N, and that's fine, right? I said an unordered list, I'm going to call that list L, and I'm going to call N positive numbers, right? So I know that the size of L is N. Those didn't come out of the problem statement. Those are things that I identified, so as I'm working through the problem, I can use those, and I know what those terms mean. So we understand the input pretty well, but what about the output? Well, the output's going to be some variable I'm going to create called max, and that will denote the maximum value that I find in L. Okay? All right, now that we understand the problem a little bit better, we have our inputs and our outputs, uh, we want to now start writing our algorithm. What are the steps to solve that, given these inputs and these outputs? So let's remember that we have L, an unordered list, of n positive numbers, where n is greater than 0, and our output max will denote that maximum value in L. So the first step might be, let's go ahead and set max to 0. Because we know that the maximum value um, will have to be positive because we have a list of positive numbers, we know nothing can be less than 0. So before I show you the other steps, let's think about how would we do this? How would we tell a 5-year-old or a young kid how to go about this? Well, we might say, look at the first number. If the first number is bigger than 0, remember that it's the new maximum. And now go look at the second number. Is that bigger than the new maximum? No? Okay, go to the third. Is that bigger? It is. Okay, now make that the new maximum. And continue that until you get to the end of the list. And that's exactly what these steps are going to do. So for each element, or each E is what I'm going to be using as a variable for me. So for each element in the list L, if that element that I'm looking at is greater than the max, then I want the new max to be whatever that element was. Otherwise, I just continue on. And I keep doing that for every element in the list. All right, so this is the algorithm I'm coming up with based on my input and my output. Now, if my input and output change, my steps that I do might have to change as well. Now, once you get this, once you've understood your problem and you have your input and your output, and you've developed your steps, work it out. Draw it on a whiteboard, sheet of paper, and figure out, does it work? So let's find out. Let's see if it will work for us. All right, so let's walk through this a little bit. Where Let's just create a list of numbers. So let's say we have the list 5, 7, 8, 1, and 9. So if this is my list of numbers, and we're going to go through this, we first want to set max to be 0. And the first step is for each in L, so let's grab the first element, 5. Is 5 greater than max? It is. So then what we want to do is say max is now 5. So then we want to jump back to the next element. So we've done 5, so now we're going to 7. So is 7 greater than the current max? It is. So now we want to update it. So we now say max is equal to 7. All right, let's go to the next element. 8. 8 is greater than max, so we update it. Max is equal to 8. And we go to the next element. Is max less than 1? It's not. So we don't do anything. We go to the next element. Is 9 greater than max? It is. So we set max to be 9. And then we got to the end of all our elements, so we did for each element. And now we can return max is 9. And we wouldn't just stop here. We would test all the boundaries. What happens if there was one element? What happens if there was all 9s? So let's look at a list where there was duplicates. And our list had 1, 1, 2. Well, what would the max be? Well, the max would be 2, but we would start as max is 0. And we check 1. All right, it is, so max is now 1. And we would then go here. We would check, is max greater than? It's not. So max would still be 1. So even if the list ended here, our algorithm would still work. Right? doesn't matter that there were duplicates or not. But it didn't end there, so we'd go to 2, and we find out that max should be 2. And 
lo and behold, it works for that. So once you create your steps and your inputs and your outputs, draw it out. See how it's supposed to work. You might find that you have some errors. And when you find those errors, you go back to the drawing board and you rework out your, your steps or your input and your output. And then once you get all that working, you can then say, I have a completed algorithm and I'm ready to move to the implementation step. The main takeaway from this video is that algorithms are the foundation of your skills and success in computer science. So the more focused time that you put into your algorithm design abilities, your problem solving abilities, the better off you'll be moving forward.